Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Star Trek Judgment Rights. When last we left off, we convinced the security team on board the uh, space station here to uh, believe that uh, Bridell is planning to wipe out the entire Federation, and that would be a uh, counter to the survival of the Vardane. So, they've decided to help us. We're going to leave this room now, because we've uh, sabotaged the communication system, the communication tracking system, rather, so that uh, we can actually uh, communicate with the Enterprise freely. No more security teams are going to come and attack us, and uh, we're pretty much in the clear for now. This door is labeled computer. We don't want to actually go in here. Also, we haven't been looking at Kirk in any of these. Kirk wishes that these people would stop shooting at him. Yep, indeed. Unfortunately, they're going to keep shooting at him. Or they were, anyway. They're not going to now. There is a special projects room here that we've disabled the force field on. Did we really, really want to disable the uh, the force field on this? We're about to find out, and by about to find out, oh, I should uh, accidentally press that by mistake, I should uh, keep it on that. Every time you load the game up, it seems to uh, forget that it has that, uh, once I've loaded up the actual save, which is a bit weird. Save we shall save on a new file. There we go. And now we shall go into the special projects room here, against our better judgment. Jim, look out. That's a nasty creature. It's just called Beast. Yep. Perhaps deactivating the force field was a bad idea. A mutated Antarian man killer, an improved version of one of the most feared animals in the galaxy. Ah, not good. Why don't we use McCoy on it? Too late. Way too late. Yep. You need to act fast. You need to act very fast, or basically the uh. The game will end there and you will die. And once again, we're being showed that we failed. Oh my God. I think that guy is probably going to die more times than any person in this uh, playthrough. Who am I kidding? We're probably going to kill far more red shirts. Captain's log. Now, uh, there is another thing that you can do, which is uh, something of note. You indeed should shoot the, uh, the uh, creature in there. You definitely should shoot it. This door. Now, uh, there are two guns. You have the stun and the kill. Look out. Well, we could have probably shot it by now. Yep, it's uh, not happy. With a name like uh, Man Killer, do you think a stun phaser is going to work? We're about to find out. No. Fascinating. Bridell has made it resistant to tissue disruption. And that final assertion signals the end of their lives. Also, just the end of Kirk's life, apparently. But, uh, let's have the, uh, Alexander blow up again. Because it's not blown up enough times, this mission. We're really bad at this. My God. I think Kirk's surprised that we're failing so many times. Captain's logs up. Now, uh, while it said it was resistant to, uh, tissue disruption, it's not resistant to the kill phaser. The only time in this mission you sh Look out. the only time in this mission you should be using it is on this horrendously powerful beast. Not surprisingly, talking to it is not really going to do much good, but a kill phaser should do the trick. There we go. That was close. A large machine. It looks like the center of an experiment. Hmm. Dr. McCoy looks at the equipment, wondering when his services will be needed. Uh, you've uh, had your services be used a few times. Mr. Spock looks at the equipment, wondering when his services will be needed. Is Kirk going to wonder when his services will be needed? James Kirk. He's a little hungry right now. Well, there is a food synthesizer back in the executive quarters you could use. You know, Jim, I really could have done without meeting this thing. That is true. Come on, Bones, it'll build character. No, I don't think it will. I have quite enough character, thank you very much. Now, let's talk to Spock. A most deadly <coughs> beast. Almost as deadly as some of the predators on Vulcan. They must be really deadly. Now, uh, there's a few other computers here. The central control for the special projects room. You have already deactivated its protective force field. Ah, so the beast was to, um, 
protect this area in general, and the force field was just for this um, console. Maybe we could use Spock on it. Spock, what can you do? What can you do with this device? Captain, I have deactivated the tractor beam. The Enterprise is now free. That's good. Uh, I cannot say that I've ever encountered this technology before, Captain. Hmm. Well, that's uh, quite useful, at least, that we've managed to disable the uh, tractor beam. Let's talk to uh, the Enterprise. We await your success, Captain. Keep us posted. You're not going to beam another person down or anything? No, no, it's apparently just going to be us. It's just going to be us. Now, there is only one more door we really need to go into now, and that is the door leading to Bradell. Now, Bradell, if you remember, is a little intent on killing us. So, um, if he has a gun, a phaser, it's uh, sensible to presume one of two things, especially if you played the first game, that one, Bradell is not going to be aiming at anyone other than Kirk. And two, Bradell is most certainly not interested in setting his gun to stun. Bradell has set his phaser that will be in the next room to kill. So we're going to have to be very, very careful here. The door is locked. Ah, but we do have a way to get in. Uh, I suppose we have to use Spock on it. Here is the code, Captain. Thank you. Well, it appears all of those misspent years playing chess have finally been put to good use, Mr. Spock. We can now enter Bradell's quarters. Marvelous. Misspent years, Captain. I think that was a joke. Definitely, Spock. You could have been spending time studying or playing baseball with family and friends. Hmm. Vulcans do not play baseball, Doctor. Nor do many humans in this century. Some do, though. Let's go. I want to have a few words with my old friend. Dr. Bradell. Yeah, I wouldn't exactly call him your friend, Kirk. Save new replace. We need to save before we go in. This is going to be a difficult one. Hello, Bradell. So, you managed to elude our security. I'll have their heads. Is that a target with Kirk's head on it? Really? That's a target with Kirk's head on it? Well, I have to give you points for style. It's over, Bradell. Surrender peacefully, and we'll guarantee you a fair trial. Well, he's not joking about that. I will not submit to a trial by a tribunal of chattering apes. We are the Vardane. Lesser species have no right to judge us. Also, it's a very nice room you've got here. Your experiment is over, Bradell. Hmm, not bad. Morality transcends the differences in species, Bradell. That's a good choice. You don't honestly think you can defy the three of us, do you, Bradell? Uh, he's armed with a gun. Remember what I said about a gun. Your experiment is over, Bradell. Let's, uh... Morality transcends the differences in species, Bradell. Let's save a thing that tends to be said at the end of an episode. Morality. It is an invention designed to make lesser people feel superior. The universe is full of moral people, and for the most part, they are dead wood. People who are preoccupied with morality never make history. Well, no, I think humanity in this setting has made history quite a few times. You always did love to lecture, Kirk. You'll be the most self-righteous corpse in the galaxy. We could let him shoot us. We're not going to. Basically, you just get turned into dust and die. We're not going to kill him. We're not going to kill him, though, um, with the uh, kill phaser. We're going to stun him. Everyone here is really slow on the draw. Really slow on the draw. He had his gun pointed right at us, too. Is Bridell. For once in his life, he's not a threat to anyone. Ah. Spock would not admit it, but Bradell has a certain scientific excellence that he finds admirable. Hmm. McCoy hopes they can finish this mission soon and get out of here. Hmm. James Kirk is not in a happy mood right now. I'm not surprised. Let's have a look around. A wooden table with some empty plant holders. Hmm. The Journal of Eas Bradell. Ooh, that'll be useful. A dartboard. A very good likeness of James T. Kirk is its chief decoration. Hmm. This seems pointless. Ah, wrong thing. Bradell's nightstand. It appears in perfect condition. 
There is no room for sloppiness in his orderly existence. This is a nice bed. He is Bridell's bed. Oddly enough, the furniture demonstrates a classical taste that you would not have expected from Bridell. Hmm. A shape painting by one of the abstract artists of the Manalvagor Decimator School. Odd. You would expect Bridell's taste to be more classical and realistic. Hmm. A painting of the pyramids of 10F2. And um, what about this? A food replicator. And nothing else in particular. Let's talk to people. Here's Bridell. Another testimony to your purest diplomatic skills, Jim. Hmm. Well, we most certainly got him incapacitated. It is logical that Bridell would wish for the controls for his experiment to be close at hand. Yes, indeed. We could talk to him. Let's not give him any ideas, like waking up. Good point. Let's just check to see if he's alive. I think he is. Agent Vardane engineered human male with prosthetic enhancements in average physical condition. Fair enough. Let's look at that book. I'll read it. Indeed. What does it say? According to this book, Bradell's secret code is 2162. Hmm. Well, I suppose we could, uh, look around? No, I don't think that's necessary. Oh, we could get the book. Might as well take it with us. You pick up Bradell's journal, and a bookmark falls out. Hmm. This is unusual, Captain. I would not have expected a man like Bridell to rely on a paper record. Well, I suppose a paper record cannot be scanned by the computer. Who knows, Spock? Let's have a look at that uh, bookmark, shall we? A bookmark from Bridell's journal. I think it's important that we go um, get that. What does it have on it? The bookmark is intricately decorated, not too dissimilar from a computer circuit pattern. Ah. There's also a machine here that we totally didn't uh, look at. Controls for Burdell's personal computer system. Now, somewhere in here is the answer to what we are uh, searching for here. Now, well, there is a dartboard here that seems a little ridiculously out of place. I think we need to use it. Because, as I recall, this is not so much a dartboard. The offending dartboard is removed, revealing a set of controls. Yes, controls. Here are some controls. A set of once hidden controls. There is a key card slot and a number entry pad. Ah, these are probably the controls for the uh, Big Bang Files weapon, or basically what he's going to use to blow up the entire Federation. Maybe we could have Spock use it. Try not to blow up the Federation, Spock. I am inputting the code from the book. Two, one, six. Two. That's a bad idea, isn't the it? The code is not correct, Captain. It appears to be a trap. I have bypassed the detonation circuit. Oh. Oh, well. That indeed is a trap. Hmm. Good thing that we uh, managed to avoid that. That could have ended really badly. Alright. What's on there, though? None of the computer's systems appear to be in control of the Proto-Event Project. Hmm. Oh, fair enough. What about if we... We have the dartboard in our inventory. Why don't we scan the bookmark? Captain, there is a number coded in base 64. The number is 2188. Oh! And if we scan this? This would appear to be the control system for the proto-event weapon. It is already active and preparing to fire when the conditions in the phenomenon are correct, which would be at any moment. It is targeted on Sector 001. Hmm. Earth! That one-eyed monster plans to destroy Earth! Uh, yeah, not just Earth! Affirmative, Doctor. I will need Bradell's codes to deactivate it. Fortunately, we have Bradell's codes. We actually have them on the bookmark, which is pretty handy. So, uh, we're going to use the bookmark on the, uh... Their systems are incompatible, Captain. Oh. Well, fair enough. Uh, we do have a code. Save new gate replace. We might as well try that code instead. Fortunately, Spock was able to uh, bypass the, uh, the trap on this. I am 
inputting the code from the bookmark. Two, one, eight, eight. That should probably do the trick, hopefully. I have activated the code circuit. The proto-event weapon is decloaking. I have also managed to deactivate the station's shields and have a clear communications channel to the Enterprise. I wonder if the Enterprise is going to blow up the uh, proto-event weapon. Broadcast the coordinates, Mr. Spock. Have the Enterprise destroy that weapon. Good plan. The coordinates have been sent. And now I think we're going to have a cutscene. Scotty, three to beam up. We were just in time by the looks of it. It was about to fire. We'll deal with Bridell later. Mission accomplished! And nobody died! Because we don't have a red shirt with us. That has to be one of the most welcome explosions that anyone will ever see. Uh, that's, yeah, indeed. Um, we don't like having explosions because that typically means bad things are happening, but hey! I agree with Kirk here. There is turmoil on the Vardane Council, Captain. The members who supported Bridell's anti-Federation policies have been forced to resign. I expect improved relations between the Federation and Vardane. I'm not surprised there. That's good to hear. Though history shows that suppressed movements like Bredel's have a habit of resurfacing at inconvenient moments. I'm sure you'll be there to deal with it, Kirk. And Bredel is now a Federation prisoner. I hope this will not prove to be a rallying point for those of Ardain who hate the Federation. Probably will, but I'm sure the Federation will be able to deal with it. I've received word that Mr. Shem's application to enter Starfleet Academy has been accepted. He should make a fine officer one day. Oh, indeed. I think he will. I think he will. Uh, maybe there'll be more Vardane in the future who join Starfleet. He certainly, uh, certainly had, um, although he had his loyalties for Vardane, he knew in the end what was the right decision to make, although he did need a bit of convincing from Kirk. I'm sure he'll make a fine officer. Captain, I'm receiving a message from the USS Alexander. Well, that's not very surprising, considering the fact that it wasn't destroyed. The Alexander? Indeed. Temporal paradoxes are most fascinating, aren't they, Mr. Spock? Indeed, because since we haven't destroyed the, uh... We haven't destroyed... Well, basically, Earth hasn't been destroyed. They were heading towards this place, so they've actually got here now. Are you attempting to annoy me, Doctor? Oh, he probably is. He most certainly probably is. On screen. Luke Rayner here. I know we've never met. Indeed. Uh, yes, of course. Hmm. Of course you've never met. We got your signal, and Starfleet has asked us to assist in cleaning up your operation. That's handy, because, uh, last time we saw you, you were mostly dead and your ship was about to explode. Uh, what? No, no, never mind, never mind, don't worry about that. Don't, don't, just pretend that we never mentioned it. Oh, temporal paradoxes. It's good to have you with us. Better than you could possibly guess. Ah, there's the ominous ending there. I don't understand, Captain. I'm not surprised. It's a long story. Come aboard, and I'll tell it to you. No, don't tell him! Don't let him know about temporal paradoxes. This, you're just gonna, gonna give everyone a big headache. I reviewed your report from your recent assignment, Captain. I have a few comments. Mainly, you did terribly and you're going to be fired. The top brass at Starfleet are impressed with the results of your recent performance. Outstanding work, Jim. Keep up the good work. Kane out. Hey, that's a good thing to hear. That's a very good thing to hear. People being impressed with our work is always a good thing. Time to leave, I think. To more adventure! Excellent. Sentinel! Hi, Captain. I'm looking forward to taking leave on Nova Atar. The museum there is supposed to be quite excellent. Lots of antique and one-of-a-kind machinery. There's some foreshadowing for a mission later, but we're not going to get to for a little while. Commander, are you certain it's not the Kazakhstanian cognac you're looking forward to? It could be both. Do they make that there, laddie? I don't know. Well, they might do. Why, Mr. Scott, I'm surprised at you, not knowing the location of a famous distillery. He does like his scotch. We invented that brandy, you know. Oh. Right. <laughs> of course you did. No, really. We did. 
No one would ever doubt you, Ensign, however. They're about to be interrupted by an incoming plot mission. Sorry to interrupt, Captain, but we have an emergency call from the science vessel Demita. She's in orbit around Balkos 3. I don't know where Balkos 3 is, but I'm sure you're about to tell me. On screen. Captain Kirk, good to see you're in the area. Ah, indeed, it is handy that we're here when, uh, plot happens. Also, notice the, uh, the computer in the background there. Does that take five and a half inch floppy disks? It looks like it takes five and a half inch floppy disks. The future, folks! Where five and a half inch floppy disks reign supreme. You have an emergency, Commander Gelman? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure, actually. Maybe more of a case of better safe than sorry. We're orbiting Balkos 3 to study the Balkosi, a race of people just entering their own Stone Age. We've only been here two days. Already, we've found some unusual data. But just a few minutes ago, during the deep geologic probing phase, we were suddenly scanned. Ah, that's not characteristic of a Stone Age. Scanned? I thought the Balkosi were just developing. Yeah, that's not characteristic of a Stone Age. They are, Captain. And there haven't been any indications of old civilizations until now. The scan was also of extreme power. Following that, we detected a power source coming online. We'll send the coordinates along with all the other information we've gathered. I was a little concerned that we triggered an old defense mechanism. With the amount of information it pulled in its scan, we'd be an easy target. I've moved the Demeter to a higher orbit on the far side of the planet. Sensible, sensible precaution. Quite reasonable, Commander. We're on our way. Indeed. Thank you, Captain. Kirk out. We are indeed on our way. After we talk to Spock. I advise referring to the star map and setting a course for Balkers 3, Captain. Indeed. But that will come next time. For when we come back. Save me we shall go over to uh, that planet. And hopefully not die horribly on the way there. There is a possibility we could die horribly on the way there if we pick the wrong place. And I'm sure at some point I will in fact pick the wrong place purposely as we veer very slightly to the left through space. Just sort of spiralling through space. I can imagine uh, Helm looking at us a little puzzled and I'm like, just uh, set coordinates so we just spiral around space slightly. And I'll just look at this going, uh, are you sure, Captain? And then they go, yeah, of course I am. Spiral around space more. It was a, it was an episode that never really got showed. The one where they just spiraled around in space for half an hour. It was quite riveting, actually. Actually, that episode didn't exist. Or did it? So when we come back, folks, we'll head over to check out this planet where something really unusual is happening. Let's hope we're not blasted into smithereens by uh, an ancient civilization's planetary defense systems. We hope not, anyway. So. I'll catch you next time, folks, and I'll see you then. Later. Oh, by the way, didn't it turn out that the Alasi were, in fact, one way or another involved in this? Because the Alasi were indeed allied with uh, Dr. Brettel, so Kirk was right. Always trust Kirk's intuitions. Except when they're wrong, but he'll never tell you about those times. Later.